Kite surfing is easy. Don't be put off by the images of pros doing death-defying stunts. This is just one side of the sport, which in reality is accessible to everyone, men and women, young and old. You don't have to be super fit. Just be ready to take some lessons and learn the basics. Then take to the water and start exploring the ocean. The aim of this DVD is not to replace lessons with a certified instructor. Kite surfing will be dangerous if you have not learned the basics correctly, so ensure you take lessons with one of the thousands of certified instructors around the world. This DVD will refresh your memory of everything you learned under instruction, and then move you towards intermediate level. We'll highlight the mistakes and issues you'll encounter when working towards your first jump. Try watching this DVD before your first lesson, so everything isn't completely new to you. We want to give you the confidence to ride and improve, so we won't just tell you what to do, but why you need to do it. We'll reinforce the need for safety both on and off the water and throughout the DVD. Safety must become second nature to you. Progression Beginner contains 14 chapters based around the International Kiteboarding Organization syllabus. This way, everything you see here will build on any lessons you've already had or are going to have. Once we've covered the theory and basics, each maneuver is explained in detail, starting with a slow run-through of the whole maneuver. Then we cover the key elements, looking at the kite and bar in detail and their actions at each stage, followed by legs and board in a similar manner. Finally, we explain common problems, looking at each situation you might encounter, the reasons why they happen and how to correct the mistake. Some chapters contain several progressions allowing you to build up your skills in a particular area before moving on. Throughout the DVD, you will use several symbols to aid in your understanding. This symbol will be displayed when we give you a warning or safety notice. This symbol will be displayed to indicate the correct way of doing something. This symbol will be displayed to indicate the wrong way of doing something. The direction of the wind is vitally important in your understanding of any manoeuvre, so this arrow will be displayed to show the direction the wind is blowing in. This DVD covers many aspects of kite surfing in great detail. There's no need to watch it from beginning to end. Focus on the areas you're learning or having difficulty with and work through the sections as your skills and confidence progress. We start the instructional aspects of this DVD by discussing theory about the wind, locations, equipment and terminology, all of which is crucial to your understanding of the sport. Then we take you through how to set up your kite and bar and the different ways in which you can launch and land the kite. Then it's a quick review of how to fly the kite before you go into the water for the first time and learn how to body drag and recover your board. Then the first challenge of getting up on the board is covered in detail as we explore water starts. Now that you're up, you must learn the correct stance and how to direct the board so you can ride upwind. We'll look at stopping and coming ashore and the rights of way rules that will make sure you know how to safely navigate around other kite surfers. And finally in this chapter, we'll show you how to cope with choppy waters and waves before learning your first trick, riding toe side. Now you need to know how to turn around and come back to the beach. 
the change of direction chapter will run through the slide and carving turns and all of the problems you will inevitably encounter. Finally, you are ready to learn to jump, the move that everyone wants to try. It's not very hard when you understand the basics, so here we'll take you through small to large jumps and a few of the advanced tricks you can try as you move on to intermediate kite surfing. Kite surfing is developing into a mature and varied sport that has something to offer a wide range of people. Whether you want to ride waves, learn the fast technical wakeboard inspired tricks, jump high in the sky and show some style, or simply cruise around enjoying the freedom that epitomises kite surfing. This DVD will teach you the basics and give you the skills to follow whatever path you want to take. Understanding the location where you'll kite surf and knowing its limitations is extremely important if you're going to kite safely. When you arrive at a beach for the first time, spend time checking out the area before setting up your equipment. Speak to the other kite surfers and find out what the conditions are like and if there are any unseen obstructions or local rules you need to abide by. If you do run into trouble, you should know where to end up and always respect local customs. Always be aware of other beach users. They probably will not understand how your kite and lines work and will be unaware of the dangers. So choose a spot to set up your equipment and launch your kite that is downwind of other beach users. Hear the terms upwind and downwind used regularly, but it may not be so clear what they actually mean. Here we can see a man and a kite. The man is upwind of the kite. The kite is downwind of the man. If the man lets go of something, the wind will blow it downwind towards the kite. Understanding what we mean by upwind and downwind will help you see how you could affect other kite surfers, beach users and obstacles. The strength of the wind plays an obvious part in the ability to go out and kite surf, but so does the wind direction. The direction of the wind in relation to the beach has various names. Onshore. Cross onshore. Cross shore. Cross offshore. And offshore. The cross shore winds can come from either side. The safest wind directions are cross shore and cross onshore. In these directions you can ride comfortably to and from the beach. You will be able to make mistakes and you will have time to recover before reaching the beach, but if things go wrong you will ultimately get blown into the beach. Many people kite surf in onshore winds, but this requires some experience and is not safe for beginners because you must be able to stay upwind, otherwise you will be constantly dragged onto the beach. Wind that is coming off the land can be dangerous and will often be gusty. If you have any problems or can't stay up wind, you will be blown out to sea. You should only go out in these wind directions if you are kiting at a school or centre that has rescue facilities. Always pay attention to the local weather conditions. If you are unsure of the weather forecast for the day, ask another kite surfer. 
Many locations have winds that are affected by local climates and the wind may increase or decrease suddenly or change direction. Paying attention to clouds can help alert you to possible changes in the wind. If you see a change in the cloud cover or dark clouds approaching, return to the beach, land your kite and wait for them to pass. Obstacles alter the wind direction. As wind passes up and around obstacles, you will get turbulence from both behind the object but also in front of it. The erratic nature of wind around an obstacle is called the wind shadow. This applies to trees or buildings near the beach, but also boats and structures that go out into the water. When launching and landing your kite, you will need to ensure that you are far enough upwind or downwind of any obstacles, both so you are not affected by their wind shadow, but also so that any piloting mistakes do not result in you getting dragged onto the object. Kite surfing, as with other sports, has its own specific language in order to allow us to describe things by names instead of using sentences. A common language makes it easy for communication between riders, instructors and pupils, and when buying equipment. Here we'll run through some of the equipment and terminology used in Progression Beginner and throughout kite surfing. There are various types of board and each have their advantages and disadvantages, but the most common is the twin tip, a board that is symmetrical and can be ridden in either direction. Most boards have foot straps that keep your feet in place and make it easier to direct the board. They also have foot pads that give grip, avoiding injury and enabling a smoother ride. A board has rails, which are the edges running around the outside of the board, influencing its manoeuvring and upwind abilities. Most boards have fins that help keep your course and increase the ability to go upwind. Kite design is constantly evolving, but in essence there are two main types. The leading edge inflatable, also known as LEI kites, and foil kites, which have no rigid structure. The most popular kites at the moment are the leading edge inflatables, and that is what we'll be using in this video, but almost everything you learn can be applied to other types of kite. A leading edge inflatable kite has several inflatable tubes, sometimes called struts, and a leading edge that when inflated makes the kite semi-rigid. The original aim of this design was to allow relaunching on your own if the kite falls into the water. The back of the kite, called the trailing edge, is not inflatable for aerodynamic purposes. The connectors, or pigtails, are attachment points on the tips of the kite that allow you to easily connect and disconnect your lines. The exact detail of this setup is shown in the kite setup chapter later in Progression Beginner.
We control the kite using a single bar that is connected to the kite by lines. Most kites have a simple four line setup, but you will also find kites with two or five lines and no doubt in the future new innovations will emerge. The bar will have a safety leash system that is attached directly to you. The front lines of the kite join at the power adjustment strap. This then connects to the center line that runs through the bar and onto your chicken loop. You connect yourself to the kite by hooking into this loop using the spreader bar on your harness. Each end of the bar has a leading line that connects to the back lines. These run up and connect to the back of the kite. The bar tips have winders to keep the lines tight around the bar during transportation, avoiding tangles for the next time. The majority of kite surfing injuries involve head injuries, so it is advisable to wear a helmet. Throughout your lessons and time as a beginner, it is essential to wear a helmet. If you are attached to your board by a leash, when you fall in the water and are dragged around, the board's behaviour will be unpredictable and it won't be long before it knocks you on the back of the head. As you become more experienced, the choice of whether you wear a helmet or not is down to you. If we hung onto the kite using just our arms, we'd be heading back to the beach pretty soon after leaving. The kite has a lot of power and we use a harness to take the weight off our arms and transfer the power of the kite through our bodies and down into the board. Because our body is connected to the kite by hooking into the chicken loop on the bar, our arms are free to pilot the kite and sheet in and out, adjusting the power and behavior of the kite. When the kite is flying, you are able to change its power by moving the bar towards and away from you. Pulling the bar towards you will give you more power. Pushing the bar away from you will reduce the power. You can see how this movement changes the angle of the kite in the sky. It is this angle that affects the power and lift the kite generates. This same depowering can be achieved by pulling in the power adjustment strap or the trim strap. This is the area where the kite can fly and the pilot is at its center. Its size depends on the length of the line. The longer the lines, the bigger the wind window. The wind window edge is the area where the kite will fly with the least pull. It can be described using the clock positions from 9 to 3 o'clock, passing by 12, which is also called the zenith. The power area is the downwind part in front of the pilot. When the kite is piloted from one side to the other, it gains speed and generates more pull as the distance between the starting point of the kite and the ending point are bigger.
Be aware that the wind window is moving with you as you are its center. This area should be free of other people and obstacles at all times. When riding, you will use only one side of the wind window. From 12 to 3, go to the right. And from 12 to 9, go to the left. Piloting the kite fast towards the opposite direction of the motion will usually result in falling in or a jump. Every time you go kite surfing, the kite and bar will have to be set up and checked to make sure all your equipment will fly correctly. Not paying attention at this stage can lead to some dangerous situations, such as the kite becoming uncontrollable, putting you and others in danger. So let's look at all the stages of the kite setup before turning to the pre-flight checks you will need to perform. Secure one end of the kite using sand, a weight bag or your board. This will keep the kite stationary whilst inflating the struts. Pump up the struts first. Make sure you inflate them with enough pressure. A soft kite will not fly so well and will be hard to relaunch if you drop it into the water. Finally, turn the kite towards the wind and attach the pump leash. How it attaches will depend on the make of kite. Pump up the front bladder, which is called the leading edge. Pump correctly so as not to hurt your back. Turn the kite over and secure it using sand. You can use your board or some other object heavy enough to stop it moving. Be careful not to put anything sharp on the kite. Before laying out your lines, check the wind direction and make sure the kite is in a safe place for launching. Starting from behind the kite, walk downwind as you unwind the lines.
lay the bar out upside down. The power trim should be facing the ground and the right side of the bar on your left. Untangle any lines and safety devices close to the bar. Step over the bar so that the centre lines are between your legs. Take all of the lines in one hand with the front lines between your legs and a back line each side of your body. As you walk, use the other hand to pull out any tangles. When you get to the end, lay the lines out so the front lines are placed outside the kite tips and the front lines remain in the middle. When using a fifth line bar, repeat the operation to untangle the front and fifth lines by keeping the fifth line between your legs and the front line on each side of your body. Take either of the centre lines and attach it to the pigtail on the front edge of the kite. Then, take the outside line for that side of the kite and attach it to the back pigtail. Do the same on the opposite side of the kite. When attaching lines to the kite, you will notice most modern kites have opposite connectors for the front and back lines to make sure you can't attach the lines the wrong way round. The lines attach using a lark's head knot, a simple type of slip knot. Make a loop in the line. Pass the loop through the loop at the end of the line. Pull the line through on itself. Put the slip knot over the pigtail knot on the kite and pull hard to tighten. The other tip of the kite will have the opposite connector. You make the lark's head loop on the pigtail of the kite and loop that over the knot on the end of the back line. If you have several knots on the pigtail of the kite, always use the same knot on both sides of the kite. Some kites differ slightly in the setup requirements, so make sure you study the manufacturer's manual before rigging up your kite for the first time. Go back to the bar. If the bar has been moved, untangle any of the lines and lay it out again. Ensure that the trim loop is not caught up. This could mean your lines will be different lengths and cause the kite to fly badly. Pick up the two back lines and apply some tension. Then look down the lines and make sure they go straight to the back of the kite and are not tangled with the front lines. 
If they are twisted, you can walk back down the lines to untwist them, then reconnect the lines to the kite. Alternatively, you may be able to adjust them at the bar. If both outside lines are twisted, try passing the whole bar through the middle of the centre lines. You may need to do this several times. Once you're sure the lines are set up correctly, you're ready to fly the kite. It almost goes without saying that launching and landing your kite is an inevitable part of kite surfing. You're going to be doing a lot of this, so it's best to get to grips with it first off. We'll show you the best way to launch and land your kite, both with an assistant and on your own, and also how to cope in an emergency. Most kite surfing accidents happen on the beach, so being confident in your ability to launch and land your kite and being familiar with what to do when things start to go wrong could well be the most important lesson to learn. In order to show both the kite and kiter in the same shot, we used extremely short lines whilst filming. However, this will not affect your ability to learn as the technique is exactly the same with all line sizes. So, you've set up the kite, done your pre-flight checks and are keen to get out onto the water. All you need to do is get the kite into the air. There are two choices. Find someone to help you launch your kite or go it alone and launch unassisted. Whenever possible, get help to launch your kite as this is by far the safest way and will allow you to cope with any small problems quickly and easily before they escalate into a dangerous situation. So let's run through launching your kite with an assistant. If the person launching your kite is not a kite surfer or has not launched your kite before, make sure you explain everything you need them to do. This includes what signals you will give them when you want the kite released. Wear your helmet as you are now ready to launch. Be certain he understands only to release the kite at the thumbs up sign and at no other time. Turn the kite over and position it in your assistant's hands. Go back to your bar and connect yourself to the kite leash. Tense the lines at 90 degrees to the wind so that the kite is flapping. Check the lines are untangled it is extremely important they are correct. And then walk upwind to get tension in the kite. Give the thumbs up. Slowly bring the kite up to 10, keeping one hand on the chicken loop release system. Check the kite reaction. Make sure it's not shaking, overpowered, or moving back and forth. It is now time to go on the water. A key factor is to never launch until you are 100% sure that everything is set up correctly. If things do not look or feel correct, stop, walk back to the assistant, secure the kite and check the lines and bar to see what could be wrong.
The crucial part of launching the kite is to position yourself at the correct angle to the wind. If the kite is not stable when your assistant lets go, it will become uncontrollable. So start downwind of the kite and walk towards the wind. Watch the kite until the material stops flapping and stabilizes. Remember, it is your job to move around and get in the correct position, not your assistant. The most important thing is to feel confident in using a safety release so that you can safely depower the kite if the worst happens. You launch the kite and it falls back into the wind window. This happens if you have launched the kite while being too far downwind of the kite. It may also occur if the assistant throws the kite when they release it. If this happens, you may be able to recover by running upwind to correct the angle, but be prepared to use your safety system. In future, ensure that the kite material is not fluttering before launching. You launch the kite which accelerates across the wind window. This means the kite would launch when you are too upwind so the kite is right in the power zone. If this happens, push the bar away to depower the kite and steer it to the side of the wind window. In the future, launch the kite to the edge of the window. Ensure that you start downwind of the kite and walk upwind until the wind is perpendicular to the lines. After launching, you get dragged under the kite. You have piloted the kite too quickly up towards the top of the wind window, generating lift. If this happens, try to keep your weight against the kite and ensure it is piloted to the top of the window. Be prepared to release the safety system if you do not stop dragging. In future, when your assistant lets go, let the kite hover for a few seconds before piloting it up slowly. When you can't find anyone to help you launch, then the only choice is to perform a self-launch. As always, you should be confident in your ability to kite in the current conditions, but even more so in this case, as you will not have anyone around to help you land the kite if the need arises. So be prepared to use your safety release system in order to land the kite in an emergency. So let's run through the full self-launch procedure. Run through the pre-flight checks to ensure the kite is set up correctly. Take the kite and hold it by one of the tips, allowing it to blow downwind. Fold over the tip and weigh it down with sand or another appropriate weight. Check the kite lines are not tangled up in the strut's tip. Return to the bar and attach your safety leash. From the downwind position, walk towards the wind until your lines are at 90 degrees to the wind. Be careful not to put too much tension in the lines at this time. Walk slowly backwards to tense the lines, keeping equal pressure on both sides of the bar. Walk a few more steps towards the wind so the kite stops flapping. 
the tip unfolds and the kite launches. Do not pilot the kite up until it has released all of the sand and you are sure it is flying properly. As with the assisted launch, the key area to think about is launching the kite at the correct angle to the wind. When you are on your own, you need to estimate the correct angle before pulling on the bar to unfold the kite's tip. Hold your bar loosely in one hand, with no tension in the lines. Point the bar at the kite, positioning yourself so the bar and the edge of the kite are in line. You can review the common mistakes section for the assisted launch to see how to handle problems when launching. As with launching, it's always best to try and find someone to help you land the kite. Hopefully this will be another kite surfer who will understand what they need to do. But if you get an inexperienced person to help, be aware that what they need to do may not be so obvious to them. Without instruction, someone may grab the wrong part of the kite or let go too soon after landing. Of course there will be times when there is no one around that can help. Then you will be forced to land the kite using your safety system alone. So let's run through landing the kite with an assistant. Choose a suitable spot to land. Indicate that you want to land the kite. Explain this to the person if needs be. Lower the kite through the edge of the wind window. Walk around to maneuver the kite so you position it just downwind of the assistant. The assistant will then walk in and take the kite. Move towards the assistant to release the tension on the lines. Unhook, but stay attached to your safety leash and retrieve the kite. If the beach is busy and other people are launching or landing, then unless you need to land urgently, wait in the water or take another run out to sea until the area is clear. Too many people with kites in the sky on the beach increase the chances of an accident occurring. If the person landing your kite is inexperienced, explain to them exactly what you want them to do. Tell them that you will manoeuvre the kite down towards the shore and place it next to them so they can step in and take hold of the large front tube. Make sure you tell them the following. Do not grab the trailing edge of the kite. Do not grab the lines. Do not release the kite until you come to recover it.
So let's run through the full landing alone procedure. Choose a spot to land the kite that has enough space downwind for the kite to fall. Position the kite at the top of the wind window and let go of the bar using the chicken loop release system or by unhooking the chicken loop. The kite will now depower and drop from the sky attached to you by the safety leash line. Once the kite is on the ground, have the leash attached and walk to the kite holding on to that line and keeping tension in it. Grab the kite and position it correctly and secure it. Be aware that your lines could be slightly tangled now, so check them before relaunching. If the wind has picked up quickly and you are out of control or tangled with another kiter, you will probably have to perform an emergency landing, which is essentially the same as landing alone. Remember that you will need about 50 meters downwind to accommodate your kite and lines. Once the kite has landed in the water and stabilized, let it drag into the beach or perform a self-rescue, which we'll demonstrate later in this DVD. Your skill and confidence in flying the kite will have the biggest impact on your success as a kite surfer. Your kite is the power source that drives the board and you must learn how to pilot the kite successfully so that it generates pull, but also how to lose power when necessary. When a kite is flying in the air but stationary, there is equal tension in each of the lines connecting the kite to the bar. To turn the kite, we must change this tension so that one line has more tension than the other. We do this by pulling on one side of the bar, which will turn the kite in this direction. To pilot the kite back in the opposite direction, we simply straighten that arm and pull on the other side of the bar. During the first flight, your kite must not have too much power. It's therefore best to select a small kite or have short lines. Your bar should also be equipped with safety systems as you will pilot unhooked and need to be able to depower the kite completely by simply letting go of the bar. In this case, the kite will safely drop from the sky with you attached. best to let your instructor launch the kite at first. This way you can practice piloting before launching the kite the first time. This is because launching the kite requires a degree of skill that only comes with practice. First, work on keeping the kite in the area above your head. Relax and let your arms be stretched out by the pull of the kite. Pull slightly on one side of the bar and as the kite moves, Pull on the other side to stop the kite. Repeat this, moving the kite towards the other side. You are now ready to explore the wind window, which is the area the kite can fly in. Pilot slowly to one side until the kite touches the ground. You have been flying to the edge of the wind window. Going back to the top, you will pass by the clock positions 10, 11 and now 12, also known as the zenith. 
On the other side, the kite will pass through one, two and three when it touches the ground. Starting with the kite at the top of the wind window, pile it to the right and the left, keeping it in the upper area. You should start feeling the pull. To generate a stronger pull, fly the kite lower in front of you, which is called the power zone. Understanding how the power increases as your kite flies deeper into the power zone will help you in all areas of kite surfing as this is a common maneuver for the kite. To learn and practice how to handle the kite in the power zone, you have two options. In lighter winds, you can use a very small kite of two or three square meters. As you fly the kite through the power zone, you will feel a strong pull from the kite. Put your body weight back against the kite. Keep your arms straight and bend them only when you are pulling on one side of the bar. Resist the temptation to pull with both arms, as this will have no effect in turning the kite. Your second option is to go into the water and body drag downwind, but you must have learned to relaunch the kite. Go to the body dragging section for more information. Remember, if anything starts going wrong, let go of the bar and get someone to recover your kite. When you learn to kite surf, your introduction to the true power of the kite will be using it to drag you downwind. This is essential, as there are always times, no matter how good you become, when you need to body drag to recover the board or return to the beach in difficult conditions. In this chapter of Progression Beginner, we will introduce you to the first body drags downwind before moving on to show you some of the tips to help body drag upwind and recover your board. Body dragging downwind is a great way to really feel the power a kite can deliver. With no board to get in the way, you can experiment with flying the kite through different parts of the power zone and see how it affects the pull you receive. If you are going out to practice body dragging, you will want to make sure the wind is either cross shore or cross onshore. You will also need to start a safe distance offshore. So, walk out into the water with the kite at 11 o'clock. Lay forward into the water and pilot the kite down to the edge of the window and let the kite pull you. Once you are positioned offshore, bring the kite up to 12 o'clock. The downwind body drag can be performed either hooked into the chicken loop or unhooked. With your arms outstretched, pilot the kite down into the power zone. At the bottom of the turn, pull the opposite side of the bar to turn the kite back up and cross the power zone over to the other side of the window. When the kite comes over to the other side of the wind window, we once again pull with the other side of the bar to redirect the kite to the other side of the wind window. We are trying to fly the kite in a figure of eight motion across the whole wind window. You should get a big pull from the kite as it goes through the middle of the wind window. The lower the figure of eight motion, the bigger the pull from the kite. You should be lying in the water on your stomach so that you can skim along with little resistance. Allow your arms to relax, keeping them extended with just the arm that is pulling being bent.
Once you start jumping, you will want to remove your board leash. At this point, you will lose your board regularly, and that normally results in you being downwind of the board. So being able to drag back upwind will become a necessity. The key to upwind body dragging is going slowly. Big movements of the kite in the power zone will simply send you off downwind. In the water with the kite at 12 o'clock, pilot the kite quickly down the side of the wind window. As you do this, lay your body out in the water, perpendicular to the wind. You must use your body's shape as resistance against the kite to drive yourself upwind. Fly the kite using your upper hand and stretch out your other arm in the water, pointing it upwind. If the wind is strong enough, you will be able to leave the kite at the edge of the wind window at 10 or 11 o'clock. But in lighter winds, use slow, gentle movements of the kite close to the edge of the wind window to keep power. When you want to stop and change direction, bring the kite up slowly to stop yourself getting dragged downwind. Put all of your weight back against the kite and kick with your legs to hold your position. Water relaunching your kite is an inevitable part of kite surfing. Everyone uses this technique again and again, however good at kite surfing they are. This method would allow you to relaunch relatively easily, but will take time and practice to master. For that reason, we've dedicated an entire chapter on progression beginner to mastering this technique. Sometimes it won't be possible to relaunch the kite. Maybe the wind has dropped, there is a strong tide or your kite is damaged. In this scenario, it will be necessary to self-rescue by gathering and controlling your kite and lines in preparation for swimming ashore or being rescued. priority when relaunching is to flip the kite onto its back. This stops the kite pulling you downwind, giving you the freedom to swim and manoeuvre the kite. So let's run through the full procedure for water relaunching. The kite has the leading edge down, pulling you directly downwind, with the lines under tension. It is normal for the lines to be crossed at this point, as the kite has made a half turn. Do not untwist the lines. Release the power of the kite as much as possible by pulling in the trim strap. Swim towards the kite until it flips onto its back. When the kite flips over, stop swimming towards the kite and pull the bar on the same side you want the kite to go to. The kite will move towards one side of the wind window, with you swimming in the opposite direction. Once the kite is towards the edge of the wind window, pull on the side of the kite that is already in the air. As the kite starts to pull and leave the water, slowly pilot the kite up.
Relaunching the kite can be very frustrating. It can feel impossible to actually get the kite out of the water. But there are actually plenty of tricks to help you launch the kite from these seemingly impossible situations. If you can't get the kite to flip over onto its back, swim harder towards the kite. A sharp pull and release on the centre lines may also help if you do so just before you start swimming. If the kite is stuck directly downwind with the tips up, swim to one side and pull the lines on the opposite side. This should help rotate the kite. Here, the kite is towards the edge of the wind window, but keeps trying to fall forwards onto its leading edge. If this happens, you are piloting the kite up too soon. The kite is not quite far enough to the edge of the wind window. Stop pulling with the top side of the bar, and instead rebalance the kite by pulling gently with the bottom hand. Pulling on the centre lines may help get the kite to the edge of the window. Sometimes the kite launches but falls back, landing trailing edge down. This is obviously very frustrating and is normally caused because the wind is light and the kite doesn't have enough power when it reaches the edge of the wind window. If this happens, pilot the kite sooner before it reaches the edge of the wind window. If you are not wearing a board leash, it can be very difficult to relaunch the kite and keep hold of the board. You have two options. The first is to keep hold of the board by pushing it in front of you as you attempt to relaunch. This will make it more difficult to relaunch as you will not be able to fully commit to the relaunch procedure. The second option is to leave the board, relaunch the kite and then body drag upwind to the board. The problem here is if you find you can't relaunch and have to self-rescue, you will have problems retrieving your board. A possible solution is to signal to another kite surfer and ask them to keep an eye on your board and they will be able to bring it ashore if you have to self-rescue. One last thing to remember, ensure that you pump up the kite fully. If any of the struts are underinflated, it will severely impair your ability to water relaunch the kite. When all else fails and you can't relaunch the kite, your only option may be to self-rescue. There are two types of self-rescue, both involving rolling up your lines and bar in the water. Then you either keep the kite inflated and swim in, or deflate the kite because a boat will rescue you. So let's look at a full run through of the self-rescue procedure. With the kite in the water and directly downwind, First, depower the kite by releasing your safety system. This might mean simply unhooking or releasing the chicken loop, or possibly pulling a safety release. Wait until the kite is fully open and settled in the water. Then, recover the bar using the single line left, and keep the kite open by tying the line on the end of the bar or winding it up onto the leash. This will secure the kite by ensuring there is tension left in this line alone. Now, take all of the lines and wind them up together on the bar. Be careful, because if the wind is strong there could be a lot of pull on the lines from the kite. If the kite, for whatever reason, is pulling dangerously, release the bar and leash immediately. Upon reaching the kite, leave the lines attached to the kite, but
but tie them off so they can't unwind. In windy situations, put the leading edge under your armpit so you can tie the line on the bar without tension. If the wind is onshore or crossshore, use the kite as a sail to pull you towards the shore. Take hold of one tip and use the bar and lines to pull in the other tip. If the wind is very light or is switched to offshore, take hold of the kite in the middle of the leading edge bladder and swim to the shore. Do not deflate the kite to swim ashore it will be very difficult to swim with. It is also a visible object that will make it easy for people to spot you if you need further help. If there is a rescue boat, deflate the leading edge of the kite and roll the kite up. Use your leash or the kite lines to secure the rolled up kite. Water starting is a fundamental part of kite surfing. In fact, you'll use it so often it will eventually become second nature. But for now, it's the first real challenge to you as a kite surfer. Before attempting a water start, you must be comfortable flying the kite across the wind window and be able to control the kite with one hand. You'll need a free hand to recover the board and put it on your feet. Even though most of the focus is on the board for this manoeuvre, don't forget to keep an eye on your kite. Be fully aware of the events around you when water starting. Check for other kite surfers and water users downwind, possible obstacles in the water and your proximity to the beach. Let's start with a full run through of the water start. Body drag out until you're a safe distance from the beach. How far out you go will depend on the wind direction and the size of any waves. Bring the kite up slowly to 12 o'clock. Position one hand at the middle of the bar and use the other one to pull in the leash and recover the board. Take the board by one foot strap, bringing it in front of you. Lying back in the water, put your feet in the foot straps one at a time. Keep your eye on the kite so it doesn't touch the water. Don't worry if it moves slowly to one side or the other. Put both hands back on the bar. Keep your weight back against the kite and your legs pulled towards your shoulders. The front legs should be less bent allowing you to get speed after getting up on the board. Position the kite in the opposite direction you intend to go, 1 or 11. Dive the kite into the power zone in the direction you want to go. Let the kite power pull your shoulders towards your knees, then up over the board. Extend your legs once your body is over the board and the board has started to accelerate. 
You want the board to point downwind. Apply pressure to the front foot and stretch out the front leg. As you gain speed, transfer weight between your heels. This will keep the upwind edge of the board engaged. Make sure the kite isn't moving fast while getting the board onto your feet by having your hand in the middle of the bar. You must bring the kite back in the opposite direction you want to go. This allows you to pilot the kite into the power zone for an initial surge of power. How deep you have to dive the kite into the power zone depends on the wind strength. In all cases, it is better to pilot the kite from one side to the other on the higher part of the wind window, then gradually lower it to reach the perfect power and to avoid being pulled over the board. This way you can't fail to water start. Light wind. Start the kite at 10 o'clock, allowing the kite to gain speed and go deeper into the power zone. It may be necessary to continue flying a figure of eight on one side until you have some speed. Strong wind. The kite shouldn't need to dive fast. Piloting from 12 to the side you're going should be enough. The first challenge is getting the board onto your feet. Keep your weight back against the kite and the legs pulled into your chest. Try and get the first foot into the foot strap as quickly as possible. Then you can move the other foot into the remaining strap. With the kite directly above and stationary or in slow motion, you will be able to keep the board in front of you and avoid getting dragged over it. Bring the legs in towards your chest. As the kite comes down into the power zone and the kite begins to pull, rock your body forwards over the board, keeping the legs under your body. Then extend the legs to the standing position. Once over the board, weight should be applied to the front foot. This will flatten the board and allow it to accelerate downwind. Once the board starts to accelerate, lean back against the kite, apply weight to the heel side edge and point the board closer to the wind. When getting the board onto your feet, you twist around to face the wrong direction. This is because you are pushing or pulling on the bar or not having the kite above you. Once the board is in place, if you put any pressure on just one foot, it will cause the board to spin you around. Play with your foot pressure on the board to keep your body in the right position before doing your water start. You might find it helps to place your hands close to the centre of the bar to avoid making accidental movements with the kite. 
If you are twisting around to the right, then you have too much pressure on the left foot. Push on the right foot to bring yourself back round. Alternatively, take your feet out of the foot straps and begin the water start process again from the beginning. To start with, you may have difficulty standing up on the board. There are two possible reasons. The first is that you are being too timid with the kite and not dropping it far enough into the power zone. Try letting the kite drop right down close to the water. You could also be keeping your legs too straight. You would need much more power to pull you over the board in this case. Try bending the legs right up to your chest. This way the board is closer and there will be less distance needed to get up and over the board. Straighten your legs once you are up and moving. If you are pulled up but the board skids downwind on its edge, you are probably not pointing the board downwind when mounting the board. You are trying to force the board to go upwind, but don't have enough speed. Remember, as you get pulled up onto the board, keep the back leg bent and push out with your front leg to direct the board downwind. If you are pulled up over the front of the board after launching, it may feel as if the kite is being piloted too quickly into the power zone, but this is probably not the case. You can handle this power if you make sure the board is pointed downwind. Move with the power. Keep your weight over the back foot with your front leg straight to direct the board. Only transfer weight to the front foot when comfortable with the power and ready for the acceleration. The ability to ride comfortably, maintain control, stop when necessary and stay upwind is all linked to the rider's balance, skill at edging the board and control of the kite. The ability to adapt to varying conditions is also needed. The water will not always be mirror flat and the wind smooth. Learning to handle choppy water with gusty winds is all part of becoming a competent kite surfer. Soon you'll be enjoying all of the conditions you encounter. In this chapter, we'll run through the various techniques you'll need to master one by one and explain how to stay upwind. The rights away rules that you should understand when kiting with other people will be explained, along with staying in control in choppy water. Finally, we'll introduce your first new move, riding toe side. Your direction and speed are maintained by the board and kite, so you need to understand how to apply pressure with your heels and toes to push the edges of your board into the water. This will allow you to alter the direction you ride in and also handle the power generated by the kite. The thing that you'll do more than anything else in kite surfing is ride with the edge of the board under your heels pushed into the water this is achieved by applying pressure to both heels. You must have power in the kite and your weight against it. Heel side edging will allow you to maintain a stable course and direct the board upwind.
The opposite action to the natural stance of heel side edging is to apply pressure to the toes of both feet, which will have the effect of flattening off the board. With further pressure, you can direct the board downwind. Having the board flat in the water allows the board to gain speed, which is very important in the initial stages of a water start, during the exit of a turn or landing from a jump. Using more toe side pressure will in turn initiate carving turns, a subject we'll cover later in this DVD. Back foot pressure has two main roles, and both work in combination with the heel side edging. It also lets you handle more power from the kite. Applying too much back foot pressure will kill power from the kite and reduce your ability to move upwind. The use of front foot pressure is equally as important, as it allows you to gain speed and maintain a course upwind by keeping the full edge of the board in the water. This stance is particularly useful when the wind is not strong and is used with toe side edging to flatten the board to gain speed. Using a combination of these edging techniques will allow you to direct the board confidently and move both upwind and downwind, avoiding other kite surfers and obstacles along the way. Staying upright on a moving object, a board in this case, can be achieved thanks to the power of a kite and the dynamic balance of your body. The body position whilst kiteboarding is very important and must adapt to wind and water conditions. The correct body stance enables the edging techniques to maintain control and also ensure that riding in awkward positions doesn't exhaust your body. So let's run through the different riding positions before looking at the situations that unbalance you and discuss how you can adjust your body and kite to maintain the correct balance. In lighter winds, your body position should be such that your back leg is slightly more bent than your front leg. Your arms are slightly bent, allowing you to fly the kite. You are leaning slightly on the heel side edge. Your hips, head and shoulders are turned in the direction of travel. When you have more power from the kite, your body is more stretched, allowing more weight against the kite, which in turn requires more pressure on the heel side edge. Your arms are stretched to depower the kite. Sometimes the power of the kite is balanced and you're edging well but the body position is uncomfortable. In this situation, the legs are correct, but you're allowing the kite to pull the upper body off balance, with your chest forward and your arms stretched. This could be because the bar or harness is not set up correctly, or may just be because you do not have the confidence to put your body backwards with your weight against the kite. Push your shoulders backwards, allow your hips to come forward slightly and commit fully to putting your weight against the kite through the harness. The correct position will be far less tiring and allow you to avoid possible back pain. When the wind drops slightly, there is a tendency to fall backwards. 
To avoid this, fly the kite towards the top of the window and pull on the bar to increase power. At the same time, bend the legs and bring your chest forward over the board. Once balance is restored, move back to the previous position. The common reaction to a loss of power in the kite is to pull hard on the bar and move your hips forward, losing heel side pressure. This will throw you completely off balance and make it very difficult to maneuver the kite, reposition your body and regain heel side edging. Try to resist this movement and instead use the technique just described by bending the legs and bringing your body forward over the board to gain speed again. You'll soon get fed up with walking back up the beach after kiting off downwind. This is the time to refine edging and balance techniques so you can stay upwind and kite from the same spot all day. Kiting upwind involves moving at a closer angle to the direction of the wind. This will make it possible to kite to an upwind location by tacking from side to side. To kite surf upwind successfully, a balance must be found between direction and speed. Edging too much results in riding too close to the wind, losing speed and usually coming to a stop. Getting too much speed before edging on the heel side will prevent you from riding upwind and will require stronger edging to slow down and get back to an upwind course. You must have enough power from the kite to maintain speed and keep an edge. In an ideal situation, the kite is placed at half the height of the wind window, but can be flown up and down to increase the power. The key to staying upwind is adapting to the conditions and maintaining speed, allowing constant edging even if the wind is gusty or the water choppy. It's all down to your ability to synchronise the kite piloting and edging. You must learn to edge enough on your heel side to handle the power from the kite. The stronger the wind, the harder you will need to heel side edge. Ensure that your weight is balanced correctly between the feet to keep a straight course. Use back heel pressure to direct the board upwind initially. Then weight will need to be balanced again. But the stronger the wind, the less front foot pressure will be needed. Think of back foot and heel side edging as a brake, using it to go more upwind, slow down or stop. The front foot and toe pressure are the accelerator and used to gain speed and turn down wind. If you move fast but cannot get upwind, 
The kite may be too high, resulting in you not being able to exert enough back foot and heel side pressure. Ensure the kite is at least halfway down in a wind window. You could also be taking too long after the water start or turn to start heel side edging, resulting in going downwind too much at the start of the run. Start edging as soon as you have enough speed to maintain edging on your heel side. If you go upwind but stall regularly, you are probably riding too close to the wind due to edging too hard. The weight is forward over the front foot, but you are pushing out too hard with the back foot. Try and push out less with your back foot to maintain a course that is not so close to the wind and pull the bar towards you. When you are overpowered, it can be a struggle to stay upwind. Ultimately, you will need to use a smaller kite or board, but this might not be possible immediately. The key to handling so much power is edging and controlling the speed. From the time you water start, you need to use small, slow movements of the kite and start edging hard immediately. Keep the board speed slow by riding close to the wind with lots of pressure on the back foot. Lower your kite when edging hard. When you're a kite surfing beginner, you may get nervous kiting around other people and therefore learning to slow down and stop will add to your confidence on the water. You need to be able to stop not just when you are riding around in control, but also when you lose control or need to stop quickly. The key to stopping quickly is using the skills you have already learned from riding upwind. Force the board to head upwind so it stalls. Do this by keeping the kite still and edging hard, putting your weight over the front foot. This will allow you to push out hard with your back foot, forcing the board upwind. As your board speed reduces, slowly bring the kite up to help you keep balance. You will then drop in backwards or regain balance and continue on. If you are overpowered, you might end up losing control and end up bearing off downwind fast. The first instinct will be to bring the kite above your head in the hope of losing power. If you do this, then bring the kite up slowly or you'll be pulled from the water. As the kite is brought steadily upwards, try and lean your whole body against the kite, otherwise you may find yourself off balance, catch the toe side edge and crash. This solution will work if you're in an area with no other kiters or obstacles, but you will have very little control and have to wait for the speed to slowly decrease before falling in backwards. A better solution is to try and regain your edging of the board by bringing the kite slightly down. Lean back against the kite and move the bar away from your body to depower the kite. Keep your weight over the front foot and push out hard with the back leg, with the board's edge pushed deep into the water.
The object is to quickly kill your speed, and as a result, the kite will continue to fly fast and rush to the front of the wind window. This method takes some practice, but when mastered will become one of the most important ways of staying in control on the water. We all have to come in off the water at some point, and doing so by charging the beach at full speed will not only endanger yourself, but also everyone else. First, use the techniques we've just shown you to slow down some distance from the beach. Then, you have two options. Get off the board in deep water and body drag in, allowing you to avoid any obstacles in the shallow water. Alternatively, cruise in slowly to shallow water and stop, then step off the board. The key, as always, is to stay in control of your kite at all times. Once on the water and kiting around, you will come into close contact with other kiters and will need to ensure everyone's safety. The right to weigh rules will help you figure this out as you go along. If you have the right of way, then that means you should hold your course and let the other rider move out of your path. The rider entering the water has right of way over the one coming back to shore. When two riders converge on opposite tacks, the rider on port, having his left hand forward, must give right of way and pass downwind of the other rider. A rider going faster than another in the same direction must give way to the slower. When passing upwind of another kite border, the rider must pilot his kite overhead. The kite border downwind must pilot his kite as low as possible. The rider surfing a wave has priority over the one who is jumping in the opposite direction. This doesn't apply when close to the shore if someone is launching, as they will always have priority. Right of way must be given to other ocean users. Kiteboarding is the latest water sport and it's not always understood by other ocean users. Kite downwind of them. A rider must have a clear safety zone of 50 metres downwind because he moves downwind when jumping. Also, keep a 30 metre safety zone upwind if you intend to jump or are not completely in control, so that you can bring your kite up above your head without fear of a rider upwind having their kite over you. It's rare to have completely flat water, so prepare for choppy conditions or waves. You'll need to cope with these conditions, but it won't be long before you actually begin to enjoy them. Your legs are the suspension, so try to keep your upper body stable, following the water using your legs. If it is very choppy, it may be hard to maintain an edge if you are bouncing around. This normally happens from going too fast. Try and keep your speed down by putting more weight over your back foot. Kiting in waves can be quite daunting, even in small waves, especially if you are not very good at jumping. 
The trick here is to keep the speed low as you approach the wave by applying back foot pressure. As you reach the wave, allow your legs to be your suspension, pulling them up towards your chest and moving your kite slightly higher. As you go over the top, extend your legs and allow the board to roll over the wave. Apply front foot pressure and pilot the kite lower. In large waves, bring the kite up slowly to 11 as you reach the wave and go up the face. This will take the weight off the board as you float over the wave, rather than getting pulled straight through it. It's easier to get over unbroken waves, so use toe side edging to bear off downwind to escape the white water. We've already demonstrated how to transfer weight to your toe side edge to enable you to move downwind but you can also change your stance to ride along on your toe side edge. Riding toe side, or switch, is a great feeling in itself, but will also help you with carving turns, riding waves, and landing jumps. The first challenge is to get onto the toe side edge. There are several ways. Sliding the board. Ride along as normal on the heel side edge. Transfer your weight to the front foot and push out with the back foot to slide the back of the board out. As the board slows, keep your weight on the front foot and flatten off the board. As the back of the board starts to move round, your front foot now becomes your back foot and you keep it bent, applying toe side pressure and pull the leg under your body. You are now riding on your toe side edge. Apply pressure on the front foot to keep speed. Hop. In a later chapter on this DVD, we will show you how to jump. Then you'll be able to do a small hop to turn the board. This uses the same movement as a slide method, but the initial heel side edging is far more extreme, allowing us to pop out of the water and turn the hips so that what was once our back foot can come round to the front. Then bend the new back leg and bring it under our hips. Initially land with the board pointing downwind and apply toe side pressure. Water start. You can perform the water start to come up on your toe side edge. Again, this is a similar motion to the slide. As you drop the kite down into the power zone and get pulled out of the water, keep all the weight on your front foot and apply some heel side edge, allowing the back foot to slide out and become your new front foot. You can also get to toe side by performing a carving turn. This we will go through in detail in the change of direction chapter coming up next. Once on your toe side, you will probably find it hard to maintain your edge and fall into the water. Here are some tips that will help you get used to this new way of edging. To start with, don't try and edge very hard and ride on a broad downwind course. 
This will help you get used to twisting your body. When first learning to go toe side, you'll probably end up losing a lot of ground downwind. So try and ride upwind beforehand, or try this out on a downwinder. As you begin edging harder, it'll be easier balancing the weight between your feet. Really twist your hips and shoulders around to face the direction you're traveling in, as this will help keep your weight on your toes. As you become more confident, you'll be able to apply more pressure to the front foot and gain more speed. Lean in hard against the kite, keeping the legs bent. Try letting go with your front hand to fully extend out over the water. It almost goes without saying that once you take to the open water, one of the most useful manoeuvres to master will be change of direction. Once you head off, you're going to have to turn around at some point, so a great deal of time will be saved by not falling into the water and having to force yourself around. There is a much better way of doing it, and in this section we'll teach you three of the best ways to change your direction with style and without getting wet. Achieving this will require the coordination of your kite and board, but once it's been mastered, you'll be rewarded by being able to stay upwind with much greater ease. You must always look behind you before trying to change direction. Doing so will ensure that no one else is too close and avoid the possibility of collision. Look downwind to make sure you will not run into someone else. Check that anyone upwind of you is far enough away that you can bring your kite up to 12 without interfering with their kite. The slide turn is the easiest turn to master and is best performed with a twin tip board. It's also the turn people use most, however good they are at kiting. Essentially, to perform this turn, the rider slows to a stop before riding off in the new direction, but doing so using the lift and power of the kite to stop yourself falling in backwards. So let's start with a full run through of the slide turn. Reduce your speed slightly and bring your kite up slowly to 12. At the same time, stretch out your back leg and engage the heel side edge. The board will skid a little and shift slightly upwind. As your forward motion reduces and you are about to stop, pilot the kite faster in the opposite direction, keeping your weight back against the kite and your new front leg straight to allow the board to accelerate. Bend your back leg and engage the edge as soon as you are settled in the new direction. Now we're going to focus on the key elements of the slide turn. Let's start by looking at the motion of the kite during the turn. 
there are two distinct movements of the kite join the entry to the turn and join the exit. We already know that the kite needs to be brought to 12 o'clock as you begin to slow down. And the most significant factor at this point is remembering to pilot the kite to this position when you stretch your back leg. As soon as you anticipate that your board is about to stop, drop the kite swiftly into the power zone in the new direction. The trick to mastering the slide turn is to focus on the balance between your feet. Your weight will shift between your feet during the maneuver and you must understand that the changes in the kite's behaviour is telling you when to shift your weight appropriately. Let's focus on the various points when your weight shifts between your front and your back feet and you will see how this relates to the kite. When you are ready to initiate the turn Bring your kite slowly to 12 o'clock and begin focusing your attention on your back foot. Stretch out your back leg and engage your heel side edge. This will slow the board down and also force your board slightly upwind. As you come to a standstill, your weight transfers to your new back foot and your body will turn to face the new direction. This change in your body's stance and balance is in preparation for the pull of your kite as it drops into the wind window. The final stage comes as the kite pulls you in the new direction. Your weight transfers to the new front foot, keeping the leg straight and flattening the board off. This encourages the board to accelerate in the new direction. Once you're moving, apply normal heel side edging to remain in control. When you first try this manoeuvre, you'll almost certainly fall in backwards as you come to a standstill. This is a very common mistake and easy to rectify. The reason it happens is due to incorrect piloting of the kite by bringing it up too slowly to 12 o'clock or not dropping it into the power zone quickly enough. You will only need slight increases in the speed of your kite handling to stop yourself from falling backwards. If the kite changes direction and you don't, you'll be pulled off balance and into the water by the kite. A good gauge is whether you are having difficulty keeping your legs bent as you make the turn. If this happens, reduce your speed by edging harder into the turn. And remember not to fly the kite too quickly or past 12 o'clock until you have come to a stop. Some people have difficulty accelerating out of the turn with their board nose diving. There are two reasons for this. The first is when too much weight is put onto the new front foot or weight is transferred too soon in the process. Remember not to put your weight onto the new front foot until you feel the first pull of the kite. Secondly, there is a tendency not to commit fully when transferring weight from the back foot to the new back foot as the kite reaches 12 o'clock. In this case, you will remain off balance throughout the manoeuvre 
and be pulled straight over as the kite begins to pull. To avoid this happening, concentrate on the chain of events with regard to your weight throughout the turn. Back foot, new back foot, and new front foot. Mastering the slide turn is a crucial stage in your kite surfing development and will be useful to you whatever level of proficiency you reach. But in order to further explore the freedom that kite surfing offers, we're going to learn a turning manoeuvre that enables you to turn without the need to stop midway through. The carving turn is the next step and offers you the opportunity to maintain the speed of your board throughout the turn, a factor that will add greatly to the exhilaration and excitement of the kiting experience. So let's start with a full run through of the carving turn from heel side to toe side. To start with, reduce your speed. Eventually you will be able to do this with more speed, but for this you'll need more practice. Push out with your back leg to engage the heel side edge and reduce your speed. Bring the kite up towards 12 o'clock and allow your body to lift forwards until your weight is over the board. When the kite reaches 12, put pressure on the toe side edge as you continue to steer the kite into the new direction. As the board goes through the downwind position, Pilot the kite faster towards the direction you want to reach and push hard on your toe side edge. Now you can continue riding toe side or move your board round to the heel side position. Now we're going to focus on the key elements of the carving turn from heel side to toe side. The kite moves fluidly throughout this manoeuvre and as with the sliding turn, the coordination between the kite movements and the board are critical. In the initial stages of the turn, you will need to bring your kite slowly up to 12 o'clock. Throughout the middle section of the turn, the kite's power will naturally extend your arms and allow you to be pulled through the remainder of the turn. As soon as you move from the downwind position, you must move the kite into the power zone with speed and commit your toe side edge. The bigger the board's arc, the more dramatic the kite's movement will need to be. Essential to the carving turn is a smooth transition from heel side to toe side edge, keeping your body balanced against your kite throughout the turn. As you approach the turn, edge hard to reduce your speed. The kite will need to be moving towards 12 o'clock at this point. As the kite lifts your weight, allow yourself to be pulled forwards, transferring weight onto your toe side edge and the back foot. When the board points downwind, steer the kite fast in the new direction. As you feel the pull, Bend your legs and push hard with the toe side edge. Notice how the balance is kept predominantly on the back foot throughout the whole turn.
All too frequently, people lose power and stall, sinking in the water. This is normally caused because the kite has been piloted without enough power in the new direction, or because you didn't carve fast enough to keep up with the kite. This results in the kite losing all its power at the edge of the wind window. So, there are two areas you need to concentrate on. The first is that you apply more pressure on the back toe side edge throughout the turn. The second is to ensure that you keep your weight against the kite, so that you are controlling the kite rather than it pulling you off balance. Try to keep your legs bent and your weight forwards into the turn. If you end up kiting downwind with the kite above you, it means that you have failed to commit to the final section of the turn with enough conviction. In this case, try to enter the turn with less speed, but remain focused on completing a tight arc. In many ways, this is similar to the last maneuver, but because we're carving through the main section of the turn on the heel side, it can be carried out with greater speed and fluidity. It can therefore look smoother and can be more exhilarating for the rider. You will need to be able to ride comfortably on your toe side before attempting this maneuver. So let's start with a full run through of the carving turn from toe side to heel side. Ride toe side with a moderate speed and your kite at 10 to 11. Slowly bring your kite up to 12. As you do this, come off your toe side edge, applying light pressure to your heel side edge. When the board reaches the downwind position, Keep piloting the kite towards the new direction. Apply more heel side pressure and lean back against the kite. Continue to apply pressure to your back foot and heel side edge as the kite powers through the wind window. Once you have mastered the heel side to toe side turn, you will be familiar with all of the key elements needed for this maneuver. Once you've mastered turning, you'll be keen to make the turns more adventurous. Introduce more speed by using exaggerated movements of the kite and committing to harder edging. From this point, more challenging elements can be introduced to the change of direction, such as jumps and spins, and these are covered in detail in the Progression Intermediate DVD.
Most people say that the sense of freedom they get from jumping and flying through the air is the best part of kite surfing. It's also the biggest attraction to new kite surfers and keeps those who have already mastered it obsessed with the sport over the years. So what better way to end progression beginner than by opening the world of jumping for you? But jumping can often be confusing for inexperienced kite surfers, as it is the power and lift from the kite that allows us to jump and not necessarily a wave or a ramp. It's possible to jump on flat water or with the help of waves and with a little practice anyone can do it. To learn to jump you must be able to ride with power and maintain an edge. Though the temptation will be to try and jump as high as possible, remember that it's best to land rather than crash. Jumping involves you leaving the water and flying downwind, so be sure you've got enough space downwind. Don't jump close to the beach. Don't jump when you are upwind of other kiters. And don't jump if you have a kiter close behind you. So always look behind you before jumping. When first learning to jump, understand that it is initialized by using the power of the kite as it moves towards the top of the wind window and generates lift. At the same time, edging of the board is used to increase the pull of the kite. The speed at which you move the kite from 10 or 11 up to the top of the window and your ability to hold an edge until the last second will affect not just the height and length of the jump, but also control in the air and landing. So let's start with a run through of your first jump. Here we will only be using small movements of the kite to avoid getting into too much trouble. The next progression will use more extreme movements of the kite, allowing some real height. Riding controlled and fairly fast, with your kite low, bring the kite up slowly to 11 o'clock. Edge hard on your heel side and at the same time pull with your back hand to pilot the kite up to 12. When you feel the kite pulling you upwards, come forwards and release the board's edge. Let your weight hang from the kite through the harness. As this is only a small jump, pull gently with the front hand almost immediately to start piloting the kite back down in the direction you are travelling. As you come into land, extend both of your legs. Bend your legs to soften the landing, but immediately extend your front leg to force the board downwind and keep the board flat. Slowly apply pressure to the heel side edge and start edging back upwind. The use of the kite in this initial progression of the jump is very important. Pilot gently, which should mean it is hard to make errors in your kite flying, allowing you to concentrate on what the board and legs are doing. Initially, move the kite slowly to 11 o'clock and then move quickly up to 12. It is when the kite moves quickly that the board edge is released and leaves the water. 
Because the jump is small, we must pull gently with our front hand almost immediately after we leave the water, so the kite begins to move back down to give some power when landing. Here, we will concentrate on the legs and board technique. In this progression, you will learn the feeling of when to release the edge and push with your legs. This becomes crucial when we introduce the power and lift from the kite in the next progression. You need to make sure that you are edging hard as you fly the kite upwards to 12. This will give you resistance against the kite, more power, and allows you to stay in the water until the kite is pulling you upwards. The second key area is join landing. You need to make sure the board points downwind as you land. Do this by keeping your body up over the board, with your back leg bent and your front leg straight to flatten the board. If the kite goes up but you don't leave the water, you are either underpowered or piloted the kite up too slowly. Small jumps are also due to a lack of edging before taking off and to a bad coordination between the edging and piloting of the kite backwards. When you land, you fall in backwards and the kite falls out of the sky. It means you are not piloting the kite correctly. You must pilot the kite more firmly forward to bring it back to a power position before landing. You may also be pulling with your back hand for too long at the beginning of the jump and sending the kite too far past 12 and in the opposite direction. Do not let the kite go back past 12 o'clock. When you spin under the kite while taking off, it means you are probably pushing too hard on the back heel side edge at takeoff. Ensure you keep the weight balanced between both feet as the kite lifts. Turning the head or shoulders whilst taking off or during the jump can also trigger a turn in the air. When you land and the board skids on one edge, making you fall backwards, it means you are landing with the board perpendicular to the wind or even upwind. You must direct the board downwind when coming in to land. Do this by pulling the back leg up under your hips and pushing your front leg forwards. Landing this way allows you to land with stability and ease and also lose the speed you gained during the descent. Sometimes you will go fast, but not high. Your board is aimed too downwind before the launch. Edge harder on the heel side edge, especially on your back foot, and keep your weight back against the kite before starting your jump. Once you are able to hold the edge until the kite is pulling upwards, you are ready to start using more extreme movements of the kite. This enables more height in the jump and opens the opportunity to attempt more advanced jumps and tricks.
So let's run through the second jump progression using the full power of the kite. Riding controlled and fairly fast, with your kite low, edge hard on the heelside edge. Keep your weight back against the kite and pull moderately hard with your back hand to pilot the kite up towards 12 in a steady motion. When you feel the kite pulling upwards, come forwards to release the edge, allowing the kite to lift you up. Let your weight hang from the kite through the harness and pull the bar slightly towards you. Pilot the kite slightly past 12 before balancing the kite in the sky. Keep it there until you start to fall. As you drop, First pull lightly with your front hand to start the kite moving forwards, pulling harder as you come into land so the kite drops down into the power zone. Keep your back leg bent but straighten the front leg to point the board downwind. As you land, Keep the board pointing downwind and flat. Slowly apply pressure to the heel side edge and start edging back upwind as you balance against the power of the kite. During the launch you are piloting the kite from 10 through to 1 or 2, through to 11. During this time, make sure the kite doesn't go too far to the other side of the window. Overflying the kite would not allow you to pilot it back for landing and lead to a crash. During the flight you must keep the kite stable about your head or slightly behind. Don't be tempted to fly the kite forward too early or too gently, as this will leave the kite at the edge of the wind window with little power. Coming into land, you will need to pull hard with your front hand to pilot the kite into the power zone. This will ensure you have power in the kite and enough speed to keep you planing on your board after landing, which in turn will give you a softer landing. During the launch, try and hold your heel side edge for as long as possible. This will enable a higher rather than longer jump. Do not be tempted to initiate the jump because of the increase in pull as the kite rises. You must wait for the upward lift rather than the sideways pull. During the flight, keep your legs bent and your weight against the kite. As you come into land, the most important thing to remember is to point the board downwind. This way, when the kite drops into the power zone and pulls you horizontally, you will be able to go in the direction that the kite pulls, giving a soft landing. Keep the back leg pulled under your hips and the front leg straightened to point downwind.
Review the common problems for the first progression as they also apply here. However, the results are normally exaggerated due to the larger kite movements during the launch and landing. Once you have mastered the art of jumping, the world of kiteboarding is wide open to an ever more evolving array of tricks, influenced by many sports such as wakeboarding, snowboarding and skateboarding. To start with, try some simple tricks which will help you with your kite flying and control during the jumps. You will also find more detail in the Progression Intermediate DVD. After launching, pull the legs into your chest and let the shoulders and head drop backwards so you can pivot around your harness. Stretch out the legs so they are pointing up into the air. Towards the end of the trick, Bring the legs and the upper body in towards your chest and, with control, pivot back upright. Don't let your body swing back into the normal position, as it will put you off balance for landing. If you managed a big jump, you can also let go of the bar when you are upside down. This trick is called a dead man and gives you a great view of the world upside down. Just remember to increase the kite power before jumping and to grab the bar and get yourself back into position for landing. After the launch, take your back hand off the bar and try and grab the tail of the board. Don't try and bend down and reach for the board. Pull your legs up to your chest and bring the board to your hand. You may want to place the hand that is still on the bar near the centre of the bar to stop you accidentally pivoting the kite forward too soon. Keep the weight on the harness and not on the bar. Once you can comfortably grab the tail, try grabbing other parts of the board. Grabbing the board on the toe side edge between your feet is called an indie grab and will take more of a stretch. Try letting go with the front hand and grabbing the nose of the board. Board grabs are an elemental part of kite surfing tricks and can be combined with other tricks to make them more difficult and stylish. If you can hold a grab, then try taking out one of your feet whilst holding the tail of the board. The skill here is getting your foot back into the foot strap before you land. Remember to pull your legs in close to your chest to stabilise and get the foot strap close to your foot. This is just the beginning of the freestyle side of kite surfing. Your next steps will involve learning to spin backwards and forwards under the kite. When you are ready for these tricks, all you need to master them is found within the Progression Intermediate DVD.
Learning everything we've covered in these chapters will take time, but hopefully you will have a lot of fun practicing and come to understand why so many people are totally obsessed with kite surfing. At this point, you should be confident in your ability to kite surf safely, but be relaxed enough to simply have a great time on the water. We hope you found this DVD helpful. Fat Sand Productions and the IKO are always keen to get your feedback so we can continue to make DVDs you want to see. So please visit www.fatsand.com forward slash feedback and tell us what you think about kiteboarding progression, beginner. If you are ready to move on to the next level, then you should check out the next DVD in Fat Sand's instructional series called Progression Intermediate. This guides you through the more advanced stages of jumping. These include back loops, forward loops, and a multitude of different aerial change of directions called transitions.